Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tomorrow. Today, I wanted to talk about Axiom Space and how the crew of a private astronaut mission for Axiom is ready to launch for a two-week journey to the International Space Station. Unfortunately, the rocket is not ready after all, specifically the booster first stage of the Falcon 9 that has been assigned to this mission. The booster issue is the latest in a series of delays for the Axiom 4 mission, which was once scheduled to launch in the spring, but NASA and SpaceX agreed in February to swap the Crew Dragon spacecraft Endurance, originally set to be used for Axiom 4, with a new Crew Dragon spacecraft that had been originally assigned to NASA's Crew 10 mission. But because of delays in completing the new unnamed Dragon, that's why a swap was necessary, and Endurance was used on Crew 10 instead, which launched in March, pushing Axiom 4 into late spring. Even so, final work getting that new unnamed Dragon ready caused the date to slip from spring to May, and then that slipped to June 8th, which also slipped again to June 10th and June 11th due to weather-related issues. But during an audio-only press conference, Bill Gerstenmeyer illuminated some details that they discovered during a dress rehearsal and static fire of the booster. On Saturday, Dragon and Falcon rolled out, and we went vertical on the launch pad ahead of the teams participating in the rehearsal of launch day activities, as Alan talked about. Shortly, the dry dress was very successful. We completed the Falcon 9 static fire, but we discovered a few things during the static fire that we had to go take a look at. We found a LOX leak that we previously had seen on this booster during its entry on its last mission discovered that we had not fully repaired the booster during refurbishment or we didn't actually didn't find the leak and didn't get it corrected. We've now gone out to the launch pad. We're continuing to troubleshoot that. We should get that completed today and we will have that back in configuration and we're installing a purge that will essentially mitigate the, the leak if it still, still continues if we see it on launch day. So we will we'll be fully ready to go fly. Apparently, they didn't like what they saw after all because SpaceX announced that they were postponing the launch after all out of an abundance of safety, which is a good thing. SpaceX and spaceflight in general can't afford any accidents when it comes to crew flights. So I'd rather that they take their time and make sure that they get it right and do it safely. And I think one of the benefits of flying frequently and having a fleet of, of spacecraft is that it gives us the opportunity to review data regularly. And it allows us to look at, for data, look for small things, find things, improve things, and, and continue to fly safe. I think when you start assuming things are easy and you, start, you stop looking and you start uh, just assuming things will go well, that's when trouble occurs. And, and we're not in that mode. We're continuing to, to learn and, and make sure that we're really ready to go fly. So far, SpaceX hasn't announced a new launch date, and when asked about other launch opportunities, NASA's International Space Station Program Manager, Dana Weigel, had this to say. In terms of launch opportunities, uh, we have launch opportunities all the way through June 30th, and then the Russians have a cargo, a progress cargo vehicle uh, that will be undocking and a new one coming up and docking, so we'll have a brief cutout for that and then a brief cutout for high uh, solar beta, and then we pick up again, like in the uh, middle of July, or second week in July, really. So plenty of opportunities to uh, fly the vehicle. Okay, so we have until June 30th when that progress resupply vehicle is launched, meaning that there's more opportunities in July. However, the Crew 11 mission is also coming up and right now has a no earlier than launch date of July 31st. If there's any other issues that arise, there's a small chance that the Axiom 4 mission might be delayed even further. In that scenario, SpaceX would likely have to swap out one, if not both, boosters for those two crewed missions. But considering their breakneck speed and progress, I'm sure that whatever solution that they decide on is going to be safe, reliable, and won't delay the International Space Station schedule too much. So for now, let's talk about the crew of Axiom 4 and what they hope to accomplish during their two-week mission to the International Space Station, whenever it finally occurs. It'll be bringing a diverse crew of four people to the International Space Station for groundbreaking science. A SpaceX Crew Dragon will deliver the astronauts to the ISS for a 14-day mission packed with over 60 experiments from 31 different countries. This is the most ever for an Axiom mission. 
Although being Axiom's fourth trip to the ISS, it's a big step towards their vision of commercial space stations and the type of operations and collaborative experiments that they would conduct on their own space station someday. From experiments such as studying crop growth for space farming, including an algae study, as well as how microbes adapt in microgravity, to testing AI data processing and radiation detectors. They're doing a little bit of everything on this flight, including a whole bunch of health-related studies. Check the description of this video for a link to the full list of experiments. And keep in mind, these experiments aren't just for space. They could improve agriculture, healthcare, and tech right here on Earth. What I love most about the Axiom 4 mission is its crew. It's truly international, representing the United States, India, Poland, and Hungary. Leading the mission from the United States is Commander Peggy Whitson, who is a legend in the space industry, with 675 days in space, more than any other American astronaut. As a spaceflight veteran, she's more than qualified to lead the mission. The pilot is Shubhanshu Shukla from India's ISRO, or Indian Space Research Organization, marking India's first international space station visit and second astronaut space flight ever. Representing Poland is Sławosz Uznanski Wisniewski, otherwise known by his call sign of Suave. Suave is actually part of a European Space Agency special project group and went through all the qualifications to become a European Space Agency astronaut. Representing Hungary is Tibor Kapu, who also went through a rigorous training program in order to be officially qualified as an astronaut in his country. This crew is making history, with India, Poland, and Hungary returning to crewed spaceflight after decades, with all three countries having their first space flights in the late 70s and early 80s during a Soviet spaceflight exchange program. It's incredible to see this kind of global collaboration in space. Doing these private astronaut missions is providing Axiom with invaluable experience as a company, and someday as an operator of their own space station. So what comes next after Axiom 4? Despite all of the drama surrounding NASA's budget, NASA is still soliciting proposals for at least two more private astronaut missions, or PAMs, in 2026 and 2027, once per year. So far, Axiom has been the only company to submit proposals for those missions, which is why they've gotten all of the private astronaut missions so far since 2022. For 2026 and 2027, though, Axiom finally has a competitor who's submitting a proposal for those coveted missions. VAST. With VAST having their own private space station ambitions, they need to gain the same experience that Axiom has been getting since 2022 and learn the fine details of actually conducting a crewed mission. And when it comes to VAST, they, like Axiom, intend to compete in the LEO Destinations program to receive a contract to build the next Low Earth Orbit Laboratory to replace the capabilities of the International Space Station after its retirement in 2030. However, unlike Axiom, VAST has announced that they intend to build and operate their space stations with or without a NASA contract. So either way, getting some spaceflight experience is a big priority for them right now. It's certainly going to be interesting to see who gets the private astronaut mission for next year. But what do you think? Do you think that Axiom Space is going to get it again? Or do you think VAST is going to get it this time? Or is there another option if schedules are flexible enough and NASA decides to do two missions next year as long as they can allocate enough resources towards it? Do you think that that's an option as well? Also, since this Crew Dragon is a brand new vehicle for the Axiom 4 mission, Peggy Whitson, as commander, has the honor of giving this new dragon its name. What do you think that she's going to choose? And if given the opportunity, what name would you give a new dragon? So let us know what you think about this in the comments, and let us know what other space topics you would like us to cover next. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to Tomorrow's Space News and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we put out a new video. Also consider becoming a member for as little as a dollar a month to receive exclusive content and enable us to make even more videos in the future. Until next time, keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.